Hey lovely ladies, it's been a while since I've seen you. Hi, I'm Paula and um, I started the BII Oklahoma page. Um, this actually, I'm going to speak today and try to describe COVID and how my experience with breast implant illness and my experience with infantile botulism brought me to discover some things that I think is going on. I will let you know I have called the CDC, I have called the Oklahoma Medical Research, I have posted things to our governor, I have uh, contacted our medical strategic doctor of Oklahoma, and I will tell you that um, there is just no organization of who knows what who's doing. And I understand we've never been through this before, but I'm going to do this video, number one, for my BII ladies out there to explain um, why COVID is kind of doing what the implants did to us. And um, I'm, I first want to welcome all of our new members. If you're thinking about getting implants, I thank you for coming on the page and listening. We are not judgmental here. We want to educate each other. There are times that women decide they still want implants and that's okay, but at least we've educated on what to watch for and where to go if you do have some issues. But I want to tell you the similarities of COVID with implant illness, what I have figured out. Um, I have some information I've been researching on COVID. Um, this shows pictures of how it destroys the lungs. And there are cases where more men are dying than women, though women are being uh, tested and more positive than what a male is. And you wonder why. Of course, you look at their genes and their history. There was one case at Mercy Hospital where a gentleman that was in his 60s and I hadn't met him before, so I knew his physical condition. Um, he was in good health, um, as far as they knew, and, um, he ended up on a ventilator for almost three weeks, and he did end up getting some plasma donated because he was at the point that he was not getting better and continued to get worse or just staying stagnant in his illness. And so they did, uh, find a donor for plasma after doing a story on the news, and he is off the ventilator and doing well. Well, what I wanted to figure out is why would this healthy male that um, strong, all these things, end up getting sicker than some other people? And I asked the family and I asked the friends, what did this man do for a living? And ironically, he worked in concrete cells. He used to sell concrete blocks. Now, when you are in an area of pollution, let's look at China where this started, the density of the air, um, the pollution, not just the pollution, but what is the pollution. And so what I figured out is, is that there's also males that worked at airports that they did the baggage and all of that. What do they inhale? And also in the conditions that they're in, they inhale dust particles, all those things, but also fuel. And so they don't have a clean lung system to begin with. And these are just a few occupations. I have discussed this with my father that adopted me. He is in petroleum and he supports this theory 110,000%. Um, I'm gonna show you why the lungs react the way they do. And what I feel like, what I have found that I would love to start in Oklahoma with some doctors, um, um, just with my experience, like I said, with an infectious disease, which my son had infantile botulism, and now there's something called Baby Big, if you want to look it up, that he helped get produced by the FDA. So now there is a treatment for babies from one day to, I mean, even an hour to a year that they get sick, okay, from this spore. And I do have more information on that. I actually am trying to start a study to show which the CDC just now, I've known this for 16 years, and they just now are putting out that they feel like there is a spore that causes um, SIDS 
Well, there is, and it's called infantile botulism. I have done research with the coroner's office and saw who is most prone to get this infectious disease. And so that led me to where I am today with COVID, just to give you a little bit of history. Now, I'm going to explain the lungs with implants the best way I know how. I am a visual teacher. Those who know me know that I love, love, love showing how something happens. I will not tackle a problem unless I can find the solution. And what I want to show you is this is a silicone implant, but what we're going to focus on, remember we talked about inside is silicone, yes, and in some there are saline, but what matters is the coating of the implant, which is exactly silicone. In every manufacturer, everything's different. And keep that in mind because what I want you to realize is just visualize this as a, as a lung, okay, the smooth texture. If you remember when the towers went down and all the first responders um, have been passing away with lung cancers, um, different things, um, there's something that happens to the lungs. And as you can see, this was soft, right? Uh, no imperfections, nothing. Just smooth, smooth, smooth. That's, that's a healthy lung. That's why kids that are younger... Um, babies and um, other people aren't passing away because they have a healthy lung or just a partially compromised immune system um, because we have to look at the immune system as well as to how this is going to uh, kind of overlap issues, which is what happens with breast implant illness. We actually have some issues when we get the implants, the chemicals, the scarring that builds around, we start having more and more symptoms. And that's what's happening with COVID if you have seen now rashes are showing up and different things. The women that have been through breast implant illness understand how that process works. It's an inflammatory issue. Our body is inflamed and then we keep coming in contact with toxins, chemicals, and different things which keep adding to the problem. So this is a healthy lung. Now, for someone that has worked in an industry, I want you to hear this. This is the best I could come up with, okay? This is not, see, hear that scratchy? It also is kind of like what the texture of an implant, textured implant is. And as we know, and plastic surgeons are finding, FDA has admitted that there is a cancer that is being created by these implants that are textured. The texture implant was to help be more secure and not slip. And what happens is, and this is what's happening in the lungs, okay? So you have this textured, right? When you inhale the spore um, of COVID, um, it automatically goes into the lungs and starts attacking. If you have a smooth surface, if you have healthy lungs, it has nothing to latch onto. We can take things to clear our mucus, to keep things slipping off of your lungs inside the tissue, keep everything healthy and flowing and coated. Coated is a very important word for your lungs. They are coated because they're healthy. We take things like cough expect sex spectrants, you, you know, cough that stuff up, drink hot, you know, they're saying to drink hot coffees, hot teas throughout the day. And that, that reason is it keeps the inside working warm, flushing that stuff out. Now, if you have lungs like this, it cannot flush out because COVID has attached itself. And the best way that I can explain this is if you are painting a, a fence and we see that there's ivy that grows on a fence and you can see the way it grows. If you have a panel that is smooth, right? The ivy cannot latch onto that, right? It skips it and goes on to where it can latch to. And that's what's happening in these lungs that have been contaminated with different chemicals. And when I say different chemicals, I mean like there is um, something that I looked up. I was thinking what would the lungs look like in dust and particles. And so I looked up a concrete lung, a crystal lung, clay lung, and there is actually an illness. And what happens is people that work in industries with chemicals, they usually don't show their signs immediately. It takes 10 to 20 to 30 years before their lungs actually start showing, or um, it's probably not showing, but actually start giving 
issues and problems to that patient. And what happens is, is that it's just like with a silicone implant. If silicone leaks out, your body automatically, just like it did with an implant, it grows, uh, when you put an implant in, picture this, it grows a capsule, a scarring around it. Our bodies are trying to protect us, okay? And so that protection, um, usually should only last until that object can come out. But with implants, we have found that, you know, we leave them in, we get sicker and sicker, and now they're saying you need to change them out. What I'm explaining this for is that what happens with COVID, my belief and understanding and theory of everything that I've been reading and researching and the history, like I said, that I have and some medical um, issues is that the lungs are textured, therefore the COVID is reacting to whatever chemical, if it's crystallized, dust, petroleum, and that's what's latching on and not letting the mucus be able to come out. And so what happens is as it spreads, you grow a fibrosis. Um, with cystic fibrosis, we know that they use things to shake the lungs up, break up mucus. Well, I am picturing the lung just like with cystic fibrosis for COVID people that have worked in chemical atmospheres. So what happens is, is that your body creates a barrier in between the COVID and your, you know, the outer part of your lung. And so um, you have fibrosis starting. And then this is so rapid that it keeps compensating. When some leaks out, it grows another. And so the lungs become even more filled with fibrosis and whatever chemical buildup is in the lungs because see that has to come out. And so ironically, there is something called lung flushing. And in the state of um, Cleveland at the university there, um, lung flushing is done by a anesthesiologist and they go in and they separate the lung. They give one your oxygen to be able to breathe why they flush the other one out with salt water. You can watch this process if you wanna Google it. Um, you can see that they'll do like three liters and the first one will be cloudy, cloudy, cloudy from those lungs. The second, cloudy, cloudy, cloudy. And by the third, you can see that the lungs have been filtered clean. And that gives the patient uh, better breathing, better life expectancy, um, because they're flushing out what the illness is reacting with. That's why some people get sick and some do not. Um, I will tell you that with my experience with my son, he was paralyzed and in a coma for three months. So yes, I was the number one person that followed with the CDC um, that actually told the hospital how to deal with an infectious disease because they had not dealt with it before. And that's what we're looking at. If you have not been through this, even if you have a PhD, if you haven't been able to see how the body functions in different environments, um, I will tell you with... Uh, infantile botulism. It happens more in males, in young white or you know infant white males. Um, and the reason is is botulism is out in the ground. It is everywhere. But our bodies can fight it off or have an immunity to it. So it's kind of like what COVID is doing with some. Some people it won't affect at all with their symptoms and things because they can fight it. The ones that are compromised and not just their immune system, but compromised in their lungs with whatever occupation or environment they're in will determine how ill they get from this. And if we could... My goal and what I'm trying to do is reach whoever I need to reach to explain this so that we can open up possibly surgery care centers. The people that would do lung flushing, um, on babies we need to do bronchial flushing. Um, some of the babies are coming up with the signs of rashes, which we've dealt with with, with uh, implant illness. It's a reactant, reaction to your body fighting that um, invader, which is, you know, the coronavirus for these babies. And so they're showing other symptoms that someone may not. And the reason is, is that we've all been around different chemicals. We all inhale something different every day in our household, whether it be mold. There were times I would clean the flower bed and I would get really sick. And what I found out was the kind of mulch I was using, black mulch, was more prone for mold spores. So I was already sick and then just on top of it, not saying I had mold, but to say that that environment was not healthy for me. 
So this is my theory with COVID. We need to do washing and then a coating. And I am looking into coating the lungs to see what would help a person um, if they couldn't get the washing and all of that, you know, how to process the lungs in a way that the COVID doesn't have a living area. You know, it can get through the system and it can flush through in the amount of days that it needs to. Um, all of our symptoms would subside a little bit. Um, this is why, okay, um, and you asked me how did I figure some of this out. There's a town in Oklahoma called Adair. And it had, I believe at one point I looked and it had, it's a small, small town. Nothing there really, just small town. There are 28 cases there, last I read, um, and we do know our numbers are a little bit off, just keep that in mind, but there were three deaths. And I'm wondering why in this small little town is there so many and that deaths are happening? And what you need to know about Adair is that is where mining and um, trucks are loaded daily, hourly, every minute to take rocks and dirt and all this stuff to different construction sites. So that town's air quality has to do with why people are getting it more there um, and maybe why most are, pa you know, not most, but, but a few are passing away with it um, because of the quality of air and what their occupation is. I would love to work with someone. Um, I'm trying to, I have been trying and trying and trying uh, to find where in Oklahoma who can help me with this, who can maybe put our heads together and think of this. I will tell you that had not my experience with breast implant illness, I wouldn't have come to this theory. So I know that things always happen for a reason. So I'm going to tell you my recommendation. If you work in an environment that is questionable, uh, particles, um, construction, things like that. When you get home from, number one, wear a mask on your job. You need to be protecting your lungs, especially at this time. Um, protecting the lungs, not just from the spore, but from the pollution in the air in general, the particles in the air that you're inhaling. Um, I can go on and on about why this is duplicating and, 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 kind of taking on the same symptoms that breast and implant illness did, and that's due to the chemical makeup of whatever we're inhaling, whatever's put in our body. Everyone's environment is different. If you remember, like I said, when the towers went down, there are so many that have lung diseases and lung issues. Well, also, when the towers went down, four babies died of infantile botulism, which is crazy because only 100 cases per year happen in the United States and 50% of those happen in California. Where did a lot of this COVID outbreak happen? In California, it got hit really bad. The environment, the atmosphere, what's in the air has to do with how it's going to react in your body. I am a geek when it comes to this stuff. I believe that I have gone through the things that I have. I have had cancer as well. So I feel like I have gone through these things to be able to help others. And those who know me, um, you can ask. I have a way of seeing the beginning and the end of something and then being able to slowly fill in the gaps um, with the way that I process things and think. And so I do understand that some are going, you know, she's not a doctor. Why is she talking about this? Well, I will tell you, you can go to med school and sit in a room, but um, the best experience when it comes to things like this is going through it. And like I said, I dealt with infantile botulism. I do believe that SIDS cases, and I've been trying to prove that for a long time and need to re reach the right people. And I believe this is now. Now is the time we need to start looking more in depth to our environment and what's happening. I think politically, that's some of the issue. I, I'm i not a genius, smart person or anything. I'm just a mom a wife that has figured some things out and I honestly believe that probably our government may know this that it is the environment it is what we're inhaling but they cannot say that because what happens there may be a panic there may be uh, it have to do with politics and we would start looking into environmental things um, with the election and it changes the route of uh, our politics it changes our route of people who's in charge. It changes our route of what we hear on the media. So I will tell you that I believe 
that it is due to a compromised system, it is due to an occupation, an environment, and that there are ways that we can get ahead of this. We can start treating the people that are more vulnerable for it. And yes, the elderly are because they can't fight it as much. But I feel like that um, if we looked into it, their lungs wouldn't be as aggressive as what someone, uh, you know, with COVID as what someone that's worked in a chemical atmosphere um, and dust, particles, crystals, and it, that's literally what it does to the lungs is crystallizes. And so I want to start a study and I need help. I need um, help funding. I need doctors that are interested. Um, at first I felt this was like a here and now and I was so anxious and just let's do this. And what I'm realizing is COVID is going to be around for a while. And so I want to work with people. If you are someone that you have a relative working on COVID in a lab, whatever, please put me in contact. Um, I do believe that um, we can get a hold of this and start helping the people that really, really need it. Um, the people on the front lines are in you know, danger of giving, getting COVID, but their environments have been different, so their lungs are different. Um, I wanna be able to look at more data um, and make sure we have the right numbers and deaths and occupations because I feel like they're asking someone what they do and they see that they were retired, but what they don't understand is that this, this lung disease, silica, uh, it has to do with silicone, believe it or not, has silicon or whatever, um, that has to affect the lungs so much that that is making the difference with COVID. So we need to find ways to clean our lungs, to clean our environment, protect yourself with a mask, not just from COVID, but if you work in an industry where you are inhaling the pollution around you, if you are in construction, uh, I see a lot of road construction going on right now, you need to be wearing a mask. Protect your lungs from COVID, but also from the minerals and particles that are causing people to get sicker. Um, I know this was kind of a long video and I apologize for that, but I really, really wanted to tell you what I've been working on, what I'm looking for. Um, I am going to post this on my Breast Implant Illness Oklahoma page, but I'm also sharing it on my regular page. Please feel free to share this. Um, I know it's a theory, but I have been working on this for a while. Believe it or not, a lot of things started in late September and October with me on this. There's been a process that has happened starting then that I was able to kind of come to the conclusion um, with the help from God, um, honestly, because I've been able to take my experiences and apply them in these situations. Um, if you have any questions for me, feel free to, to DM me. Uh, private message me, whatever you need to do. Um, I'm open to any theories and um, finding someone to work with on this. Um, I feel like we can make a difference. We can start here in Oklahoma with um, working on some of these things. And I don't know, there may be doctors already doing this flushing and doing other things, but the more minds we have working on it, the better. Um, we need to take qualification and experience into account. Um, I have the experience when it comes to um, going through these things, like I said, and so I am an advocate for all medical, all medical. I am not just an advocate for SIDS and botulism and cancer and BII. I have lumped all those together to be able to see the big picture in this. So please share this. Um, like I said, wear a mask not just for the spore, not just for the mist of, of the virus, but you need to be doing it to protect from the environment in the air, the pollution that's getting in your lungs and causing more havoc. Um, please share this, like I said, and thank you for listening. Um, to my BII women, I love you so much, and I am just praying for you to get healthy. And I want to thank you for trusting in me and listening to me. Um, it encourages me daily to keep doing what I'm doing, and that is to help people. And so I want to thank you so much for listening, and please share. We need to get ahead of this COVID, and I feel like this is a good plan to start. It's a great plan to start. It is a start to something. N nothing we do is... Um, 
going to be taken lightly with this. Um, we need to get a handle on it. So, I, like I said, I appreciate you guys so much. To my Flamingo sisters, we never stand alone. And I'm carrying that out to our COVID people out there that are positive. You never stand alone. And there's always somebody working on it, trying to help you. Um, and I am one of those people. I pray every day about this and I work a little bit on it every day. I try to stay balanced in my home life. Um, I've written something that says trying to save the world when you got a clean house, <laughs> you know, and that's what I'm doing. I'm still keeping my house clean, but trying to help. Once again, you know, reach out to me. Um, I want to help as many that I can, and hopefully there's someone out there that we can work together on this. As always, take care of you. Be safe.